This year, learn from the best to become your best with Masterclass. Some people just talk about improving. Masterclass actually helps you do it. Masterclass offers over 180 world-class instructors. So whether you want to master negotiation with Chris Voss, think like a boss with Martha Stewart, or learn strategic decision-making with Melody Hobson, Masterclass has you covered. With Masterclass, you get unlimited access to intimate one-on-one classes with the world's best. And right now, our listeners will get an additional 15% off an annual membership at masterclass.com slash ratchet. Get 15% off right now at masterclass.com slash ratchet. Masterclass.com slash ratchet. Today's episode is brought to you by Angie. Angie has made it easier than ever to connect with skilled professionals to get all your jobs and projects done well. Let me tell you, there's the version of it where you try to do something at home, and then there's a version of it where you have someone help you, you watch them do it the right way, and you go, thank God I didn't try to do that myself. I have fully done things around the home that I think look good, and then a bang in the night, and I wake up to a shelf collapsing, a painting falling off the wall. Like it, I've, I've seen it all go south. I own a home, and I can tell you... I know how much work it can take, whether it's everyday maintenance and repairs or making dream projects a reality. It can be hard just to know where to start. But now all you need to do is Angie that and find a skilled local pro who will deliver the quality and expertise you need. Whatever your home project, big or small, indoor or outdoor, you can Angie that and connect with skilled professionals to get the project done well. Right now, one of my wish lists is I want a bike for my condo in Milwaukee and I would love to rig it up on a pulley in the ceiling because I have one of those like lofted ceilings, but I'm so scared to try that on my own. Angie has 20 years of home experience and they've combined it with new tools to simplify the whole process. Bring them your project online or with the Angie app. Answer a few questions and Angie can handle the rest from start to finish or help you compare quotes from multiple pros and connect instantly, which means you can take care of any home project in just a few taps. Because when it comes to getting the most out of your home, you can do this when you Angie that. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and those who don't identify as either, you are listening to Ratchet and Respectable from New Orleans. I told y'all I was coming down here for Essence Fest. Even if I didn't tell you, y'all knew Usher was performing, so you figured I'd probably show up here. I did. I think I told you I was coming, though. Nevertheless, Oh, let me apologize in advance for the sound. I'm recording on my phone and I'm sitting in the room with the AC on blast because it is hot as hell out here. Y'all, I lived in Africa, West Africa at that. I ain't never been this hot in my entire life. The hottest I have ever been in December or February in Ghana, it has never been as hot as it is right now in New Orleans. It's like 95 degrees, humidity on 100. I've been running around all day. And by the way, I'm recording this on Sunday. Didn't intend to be this late, but it's actually going to work in my favor because otherwise you weren't going to get a recap of Essence Fest or Usher because we're going on hiatus for a couple weeks. So not being able to record on Friday actually worked out. Mm -hmm. That's the way my mind works. But I'm having a good time down here. Like I'm running into a bunch of people. All the people that I didn't see at ABFF and I didn't see at, at BET Awards, I'm now running into here in New Orleans. Also, FYI, I just signed a contract, so now I can talk about it. I can't say who yet. They have to announce it. But I'll be in Chicago, I think August 2nd, for NABJ. I'm moderating a panel while I'm there. Um, If I have the free time, I'll try to do like a happy hour or a pop-up somewhere. If you were in Chicago and you know of a great Black-owned restaurant who might be willing to host a Cocktails with Belle or Cocktails with Demi, please DM me any recommendations you have, and I'll try to get on it and see if we can set something up in Chicago. One of my favorite cities. My God, I love Chicago. If it didn't get so cold, I would move to Chicago full stop and stay there. I mean, I'm still going to travel other places, but I love Chicago. That's not the point. The point is, Usher performed at Essence last night. The reviews are mixed. You know I love Usher. I cross literal oceans and continents, country barriers to see Usher. I flew from Bali to Paris to see Usher. I landed in the morning. I saw Usher that night. The show was so good. I went back and saw it three days later. I love Usher. Show last night? Let me preface it with this. So remember back in the day when Whitney Houston had some bad times. We don't need to relive the details. 
but had some bad times and then had started having some good times. But her voice, when she was having the good times again, was not quite what it was before the bad times began. And so people had pointed out, like her voice is not the same. And then other people pointed out, Whitney Houston on a bad day is better than damn near everything else you're hearing on the radio. So keep that context. Usher at less than his best is still better than damn near every other performer that's out right now. Damn near, because Beyonce exists. But Usher last night was, was not the Usher I saw in Vegas, was not the Usher I saw in Ghana, was not the Usher I saw twice in Paris. I've also seen Usher way more times than that, but these are the most recent ones. Last night was, was good. It was solid. You can't say it was a bad show. I feel about it kind of like how I felt about the Super Bowl, but for different reasons. The Super Bowl, I felt like he did too much. Like that performance needed a strong edit and elimination of Alicia Keys. Nothing personal. My boo just, you know, it's not on my playlist. It's not my favorite song from him. Last night, he just, it's a couple things because I went back and watched the footage on my phone, which was far less footage than I usually take when I go to an Usher concert. And it wasn't because I was like, oh, I want to be in the moment. It was because there weren't so many moments that were so breathtaking that I was like, oh my God, I must record this. I don't know what other people do with their concert footage, but I actually go back and watch mine because I find the performance is so electric. If I'm holding up my arm long enough for it to hurt to record a concert, it's because what I'm seeing is really, really good. Last night, there were absolutely moments that were really, really good. Usher, his mic was on when he did actually sing. I felt like he held out the microphone for most of the good parts of his songs, most of the high notes. There were a couple of songs that he really went in and sang, but there was no point in the concert that I was like, "Woo, that boy is singing tonight. Like, it, it wasn't that. In Vegas, I was like, oh, he's singing his ass off. In Paris, I was like, oh, he's singing his ass off. Ghana was more like a dance-a-thon. And that was fine for what it was. But I didn't feel like last night, it wasn't a sing-a-thon and it wasn't a dance-a-thon. It was just, he gave a solid, like, eight, which is amazing. Like, he did dance and he did sing. But it's just no point that I ever feel like he was really 100% in it. And it showed. Usually when a concert is really, really good or any sort of live performance, the people or person on stage are really enjoying themselves and that energy translates. Put it in this perspective. You know how some episodes of the podcast, you're like, Dimitri is on one today. She's really invested in the topic. She's really passionate about something. Something crazy happened and I'm telling you this story. I'm really animated. My curse words have alliteration. I have a lot of energy for it, right? And then other episodes, I'm just kind of like, hmm. It's the difference between like I'm here because I want to be here and I'm here because I'm obligated to do two episodes a week. I'm just here so I don't get fined. Or in my case, I'm just here so I get my check. That difference. I felt like it was a I'm just here to cut this check. In fairness to Usher, it wasn't a bad show at all. The same thing about the Super Bowl. Like I didn't think it was Usher's best, but you can't call it bad. Essence announced Usher less than a month before the festival took place. And it wasn't because they had booked him and then they just were holding it for whatever reason to make the announcement. He hadn't been booked. I know that as a fact. Usher had said no to Essence because he was doing Lovers and Friends in Vegas, I think for Memorial Day. And then he has his own tour, a a world tour at that, that starts at the latest September. So he's in the middle of preparation for the world tour. Lovers and Friends is his actual thing. So he was going to do the 20th anniversary of Confessions for that. Lovers and Friends is a much different festival than what Essence Festival is. It's a smaller festival, one. And the performances don't require as much, I would say, staging and storytelling as what Essence does. Like he could have just got on the stage at Lovers and Friends saying confession straight way through. I mean, he's going to dance. He's going to give you choreography. He's going to give you some razzle dazzle, but it's not the same expectation. It's not as, as big a production as what Essence is. He only had about a month to prepare this show. And Usher is an amazing performer. Usher's been consistently performing for 30 years. He's in tip top performance condition. I just think that trying to pull this show together it just never gelled the theme of the show last night was 
confessions because that's what the album is, right? So there was a cross on the stage and then there were gospel singers on stage or at least people who were in gospel robes. It never really went gospel. Usher with the cross on the stage didn't go over for a lot of the audience. I don't know who thought that idea through. Like the Essence audience, Essence, the magazine, the brand may be trying to aim at like the millennial crowd or even Gen Z crowd. Essence, the festival, is still very much what people started calling Auntie Con. I don't know if that was a theme that Usher was doing for Lovers and Friends. I have no intel on that. I think he could get away with the cross thing at Lovers and Friends because it's a younger audience. But then you get to Essence and you're like in the Bible Belt using the cross for entertainment purposes. And it's not like Usher singing gospel music. Most of his music is pretty above board, but there's also like, you know, ample filth. So like the folks in gospel robes and, and you hear me hesitating to call them a gospel choir because, again, there was no gospel music. But they're in these robes and then you have like this cross. And at one point, Usher's like kneeling down. It was great imagery. Like in front of the cross, it, it just, I was like, mm, playing with cross imagery, Jesus imagery, religious imagery in the Bible Belt. Even for people who shown up to watch you sing about filth and were there for cash money the night before, they still don't play about their Jesus. They're going to do their filth on Friday and Saturday. They still going to church on Sunday and they might do some ratchet shit after. They might be going to brunch and a day party and drinking and smoking and dancing on tables. But still, they don't play about their Jesus. So the, the cross imagery, I was like, I don't, I don't know who came up with that. But the whole thing never really gelled because it was like, it was supposed to be the 20th anniversary of Confessions, which sounds like a really good idea in theory. The album went diamond, right? So a lot of people really loved the album. But I also think the album was one, 20 years old. Two, the songs that people love, they really, really love. But there's also like some, mm, some mid songs on the album. Like, even as a huge Usher fan, like, he sang a couple songs, and I was, like, you know, sitting down, playing on my phone, like, texting my friend who was sitting somewhere else in the stage. And I was like, does this nigga have on fur? Because at one point, he was out there in, like, a full mink. And, I mean, it sounds crazy because we're in New Orleans, but it was freezing in that dome. And I was like, yo, if he handed me the mink right now, i put it on. And then when I was going back this afternoon, watching my footage from the concert, he didn't sing. I think I said this already, but it's really evident when I went back and watched the clips. These are the songs that I really love that he usually doesn't perform. These are the moments in the concert that I was like really giddy about. Like I heard the song and so I put up my camera to like, you know, record the whole thing. He was handing out that microphone to the crowd to sing all his big moments. And one thing that I loved about the other shows that I went to, let me explain it like this. So when I play Usher in my car, I get real, real into it. Like I have a whole Usher playlist. It's 35 songs on the playlist. I sing at the top of my lungs. I think I sound like Usher. You can't tell me I don't deserve a Grammy. For my little raspy, cracking voice, can't hold a note, but you can't tell me that I can't sing, right? The other performances that I saw from him, he sings his songs live with the same all in at 10 expression that I sing them in my car. Usher sings like he loves his songs as much as I love his songs as a fan. Last night, he just kept holding the microphone and I was like, I'm gonna sing along because I'm here in the crowd. But like, I want, I want to sing along. I don't want to just sing. I don't want to sing along with the rest of the crowd. Like, I want to sing along with you while you sing and then I sing too. And then we're in sync together like we be in the car, except, you know, you're not, you're not coming out the speakers. You like on the stage and then also coming out the speakers. Does that make sense? That's what I wanted him to give me. And I don't feel like that's what he gave me. And I was disappointed. Not like disappointed where I'm like, fuck Usher. Like, I'm still going to go see him when he goes on tour. Mind you, I don't have ticket the first to any of these shows, but I'm going to figure it out. Usher performs a couple songs and he has like the gospel singers when he first starts out. And then he has one of his like sexier songs, but it's him and a, a dancer, a woman. And the woman wasn't black. She was Asian. I have nothing against Asian women, Asian dancers. It was just an odd choice to be the first dancer that comes out to dance with him as his partner in an audience full of black women at a festival for black women. And it was just like, that was a a unique choice why did you make that choice and like no one told you like hey bruh 
you know this is an audience full of black women. I'm not saying the Asian dancer shouldn't dance. I'm just saying it's like the principal, the first time he's bringing a woman out to dance, he probably should have picked a black girl. And there was another song, at least one, and it was just him and primarily a woman dancing on stage together. And I was like, why didn't he just, you know, change the set list? I mean, I guess he had to sing it in order. All the more reason. Why don't you just get the black girl to do it first? And then maybe if you wanted to bring out the Asian lady later, or you wanted to have another black girl as the principal. I mean, it's just like, know your audience. Because like she came out and I noticed it and I was like, mm, okay, but like I'm trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. And then the group chat immediately blew up and was like, why he got this Asian girl on the stage? There was a whole discussion in the group chat. Like, did he not know the audience is primarily black women? Why wouldn't he have black girls as his dancers? No one wants to see an Asian woman as his partner at Essence. And then, you know, that devolved into, well, his current partner ain't black either. So and I was like, okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. He tried two black women before he got to the spicy white. He had two black vibes, a brown one and a lighter one. Light black is still black. And then spicy white. <sighs> that came up. I was talking to somebody last night. This is in the middle of the concert. She was like, what you giving it? <laughs> I knew exactly what she meant. And I was like, top of 2026. And she was like, mm, I'm giving it first quarter 25. I was like, you don't think they're going to make it a year? And she was like, I don't see it. I don't see it. Really? I told you my driver last week was like, it's weird. <laughs> I want it to work because I don't want this man to have three divorces. You know, I could be shady about a lot of shit. I don't play about divorce. That's the worst thing that ever happened to me. I don't wish it on nobody else. Three times. I have a friend right now who's in the middle of her second divorce. And I was like, I'd die. I wouldn't make it. The first one almost took me out. Like, I don't understand how you do it. This year, learn from the best to become your best with Masterclass. Some people just talk about improving. Masterclass actually helps you do it. Masterclass offers over 180 world-class instructors. So whether you want to master negotiation with Chris Voss, think like a boss with Martha Stewart, or learn strategic decision-making with Melody Hobson, Masterclass has you covered. With Masterclass, you get unlimited access to intimate one-on-one -on -one classes with the world's best. There are over 200 classes to pick from, with new classes added every month, like that Melody Dobson class I just mentioned. It really did help me make sound decisions. She breaks down the thought process to help you figure out what matters most. My favorite thing about Masterclass is every new membership comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So there's no risk. And right now, our listeners will get an additional 15% off an annual membership at masterclass.com slash ratchet. Get 15% off right now at masterclass.com slash ratchet, masterclass.com slash ratchet. Angie has made it easier than ever to connect with skilled professionals to get all your jobs projects done well. I absolutely love this because you know, if you own a home, it can be really hard to maintain. It's hard to find people that can help you for a big project or a small. Well, whether it's in everyday maintenance and repairs or making dream projects a reality, it can be hard just to know where to start. But now all you need to do is answer that and find a skilled local pro who will deliver the quality and expertise you need. Angie has over 20 years of home service experience and they've combined it with new tools to simplify the whole process. Bring them your project online or with the Angie app Answer a few questions and Angie can handle the rest from start to finish or help you compare quotes from multiple pros and connect instantly, which means you can take care of just about any home project in just a few taps. Because when it comes to getting the most out of your home, you can do this when you Angie that. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. Is that everything for Essence? Morris Chestnut is running around here. I didn't know where he was to go see him and stalk him properly. If I'd known, you know I would have been there. And also Method Man. Method Man is walking around smiling with all of his teeth and pulling his shirt up. So many people sent me that video and I thanked every single one of them. Like every single one. I was like, thank you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. 
I want every single person who sent me video of Method Man's abs and his full teeth. I want every single one of them to know how appreciative I am of that video. That's just a beautiful specimen of man. This one lady was like, yo, his wife must hate us. And I was like, his wife absolutely hates us. She wants to punch every single one of us in the face. She must. She might want to punch him in the face too for walking around inciting us. There was no good reason for that man to be pulling up his shirt and then smiling with all his teeth in the camera like that. It was no good reason. It's like you were inspiring a lust fest. I thank you for it. I'm not mad at you at all. But if your wife punched us in the face and then like you too, I'd be like, well, you know. If Method Man's wife ever ran up on me, like on GP, I would have to let her get a fair one in. Because I'd be talking about that married man like he ain't married. Morris Chestnut too. Pam? I don't even know Method Man's wife's name. She is so behind the scenes. I only know Pam's name because Morris Chestnut talked about her. But if Pam wanted to punch us in the face too, especially me, I, I deserve it. I absolutely deserve it. I'd be thinking like unbiblical thoughts. It's, I'm sorry, Pam. At least Sabrina Elba, Sabby acknowledges us. She was like, our husband. Yes, Sabby, yes. That's a smart lady. Because now we don't have no animosity towards Sabby. I'm like, oh, our sister Sabby? She shares with us. We love Sabby. I was mean to Sabby early on. And I feel bad about that. I've said that several times on here. I was mean. And I shouldn't have been mean. That was bad of me. I'm a work in progress. I'm growing. I have grown. You know who has not grown? <laughs> who is petty as fuck and won't stop? Kendrick Lamar. It was bad enough the way he decimated Drake with that damn song. And then the whole West Coast decided they wanted to turn up in the club to it. And then he wanted to go perform it on Juneteenth and play the song. I said four times because that's what I saw on the video. And then several people corrected me and was like, it's at least five times. And I was like, where are y'all getting this fifth time from? But I told you, I've seen it reported. He played it up to six times. Like live in concert, performed his song himself up to six times in a row. I saw the four times and, and people went crazy. And then when I was in LA, like I was on a rooftop and they did a whole Kendrick Lamar set and they played that song four times in a row and people just went crazy like every single time. And I'm like, y'all know y'all just heard this song. Like we just heard it. And then I went to the Usher after party for the BET Awards. D-Nice was spinning. He played it at least three times and the club just kept going up, kept going up. Like we didn't just hear this song. Like people go crazy. I've never seen anything like it. Like as someone who lived through, oh my God, I sound old, but still. But like I lived through peak Jay-Z, like I held y'all down six summers. Like he did, he literally did, that like, he didn't lie. But even at peak Jay-Z summers, we didn't play Hard Knock Life four and five times back to back. Even with Ether, we didn't play Ether four and five times back to back at the club. I've never seen anything like this Kendrick Lamar phenomenon. And I was talking to one of my friends last night and I was like, pre this beef, very often when people talk about the hip hop greats, it's, you know, Jay-Z, Biggie and Nas. Like people will throw in other names in there, but those are like the consistent top three. I feel like Kendrick with this beef and particularly with this Not Like Us song has elevated himself into that realm. Different era, obviously, but I feel like he's on par with the greats. Tupac, Jay-Z, Biggie, Nas, Tupac. But I feel like Kendrick is added more West Coast representation. I've never seen anything like it. But he just dropped a new video for Not Like Us. Happy 4th of July after Happy Juneteenth from Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar has taken over holidays. It's like Mariah Carey with Christmas. His pettiness and his marketing team and also the way that he has branded Drake as a colonizer and keeps creating these gigantic cultural moments on American holidays. I mean, it's marketing genius, but it's also, and I was like, does this man just sit around and like read Art of War all day? Like, are you doing other things with your time? I mean, other than like reading the dictionary. It's fascinating. I feel like Kendrick Lamar is going to be studying in universities like The Wire. If he's not already being studied, I'd be shocked actually. If some very reputable and esteemed university didn't already have a class on Kendrick Lamar. I mean, the man does have a Pulitzer. I'm just saying. Is there anything else particularly pressing in our list of things to talk about? I feel like there's some really good black news thing. There's a black kid from PG County going to the Olympics. Oh, remember the teacher who was getting his hair braided and he got fired? Apparently he got reinstated. I saw this on the shade room. I mean, the comments on the shade room be crazy as hell, but they actually report decent news. But the headline is Maryland teacher who went viral 
for posting video of students doing his hair reveals he's been cleared of any wrongdoing and will return to work. Mm. Has he learned his lesson? Does he understand like what he did wrong? Because I told y'all my perspective. I'm not going to like belabor the point. But at first I was like, oh, they're being too hard on him. He was playing in a gray area, but is it really that bad? And then I saw the video from an educator and he was like, hey, we don't need to play in gray area with our kids. We can actually exist staunchly in the this is acceptable side. We don't have to go into middle ground. We can just be totally acceptable and not gray at all. And that should be the standard for our children. And I was like, oh, okay, actually, that's a solid point. I, I stand corrected. Other good black news. I'm literally scrolling my list. Usher's confession, like literally the concert was last night. Usher's Confessions has entered the top 10 on the R&B soul charts on iTunes after his Essence performance. It was live streamed, definitely on Essence.com, but I would assume that means you can replay it on Essence.com. If not that, I'm sure there's somebody who has the whole concert on YouTube because I know black people. I'm confident in saying that. So if you haven't seen it, I would actually like to go see it. After the BET Awards, and I kind of knew this, but I just hadn't thought about it in a while because I hadn't been to a live show that was streamed. There's like a vast difference between what's on camera and then all the things that you catch live. The BET Awards live didn't really bother me that much. But then I went through and watched the footage and I was like, oh no, the audience energy and then the audience's reactions to various things that happen makes a huge difference in perception of whether it's a good show, a good performance or otherwise. Hi, I'm Angie Hicks, co-founder of Angie. And one thing I've learned is that you buy a house, but you make it a home. Because with every fix, update, and renovation, it becomes a little more your own. So you need all your jobs done well. For nearly 30 years, Angie has helped millions of homeowners hire skilled pros for the projects that matter. From plumbing to electrical, roof repair to deck upgrades. So leave it to the pros who will get your jobs done well. Hire high-quality certified pros at Angie.com. Today's episode is brought to you by Angie. Angie has made it easier than ever to connect with skilled professionals to get all your jobs and projects done well. Let me tell you, there's the version of it where you try to do something at home, and then there's a version of it where you have someone help you, you watch them do it the right way, and you go, thank God I didn't try to do that myself. I have fully done things around the home that I think look good, and then a bang in the night, and I wake up to a shelf collapsing, a painting falling off the wall. Like it, I've I've seen it all go south. I own a home, and I can tell you... I know how much work it can take, whether it's everyday maintenance and repairs or making dream projects a reality. It can be hard just to know where to start. But now all you need to do is Angie that and find a skilled local pro who will deliver the quality and expertise you need. Whatever your home project, big or small, indoor or outdoor, you can Angie that and connect with skilled professionals to get the project done well. Right now, one of my wish lists is I want a bike for my condo in Milwaukee and I would love to rig it up on a pulley in the ceiling because I have one of those like lofted ceilings, but I'm so scared to try that on my own. Angie has 20 years of home experience and they've combined it with new tools to simplify the whole process. Bring them your project online or with the Angie app. Answer a few questions and Angie can handle the rest from start to finish or help you compare quotes from multiple pros and connect instantly, which means you can take care of any home project in just a few taps. Because when it comes to getting the most out of your home, you can do this when you Angie that. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. I'm Louie, a.k.a. the baddest perra. And I'm Yoatsi. And, and we're, we're siblings. siblings. We might not be the most intelligent. Or the smartest. Or intelligentes. You just said that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, but at least we're pretty. pretty. You may have seen our viral challenge videos, Mexican food mukbangs, and family vlogs. But did you know we're also the hosts of the podcast, Pretty Not Smart? On our show, we expose all the cheese in our lives, from our wildest dating stories to childhood feuds to our scary ghost stories. But don't worry, it's not all drama all the time. We discuss financial hardship, the importance of taking care of your mental health, and our experiences dealing with complicated family relationships. Because we're siblings, we know each other better than anyone, which means we also know how to beef with each other like it's nobody's business. Who doesn't love listening in on a little sibling conflict? We've also had some amazing guests join the show, like YouTubers Adam Ray and Laura Mayado, and so many more. At the end of the day, I'm happy to be the pretty one and Yoatsi the smart one. Mm-hmm. 
no, it's definitely the other way around. And who told you that lie? Ask the audience. So if you want to hear the juicy perspectives of two pretty siblings, tune into Pretty Not Smart. Available wherever you get your podcasts. There was one more thing I want to talk about, and it actually came up at the BET Awards. Like I heard Taraji say it, and I was like, wait, what? Taraji P. Henson, when she was talking about voting, she talked about Project 2025. And she was like, you know, be aware that this is what people are planning. Like, go look it up. And I was like, what the hell is Project 2025? I'd literally never heard of it until she mentioned it. I don't know if that's just because I ain't really been in the country for the last two years or if everyone's talking about it and I'm just, I don't know, clueless. But I had no idea what this thing was until Taraji mentioned it. So in short, there's a think tank in D.C. called the Heritage Foundation. Full disclosure, I worked there as a receptionist the summer between graduation from college and going to NYU. I didn't have a summer internship lined up and I needed money before I went to grad school. I went to a temp agency and this place was paying the most per hour and I took the job. At the time, I had no idea that they were on some diabolical shit like this. But also, this was like 20 years ago. At the time I worked there... They didn't consider themselves liberal or conservative. They were libertarian. Um, And there were a bunch of black people that worked there too. Oh, wait, did I ever tell you the story about how they thought my boyfriend was a rapper? And I was like 22, like just graduated from college. And this woman, I think she was black, but passing for white. But she had an office close to my desk. And she came out one day and she said, Demetria, how many children do you have? I said, excuse me? And she said, your children. And I said, I don't have children. I'm not married. And I just graduated in May. And she said, oh, I thought you had children. And then went back in her office. And I was like, what the fuck? Later, same summer, because it was only for three months. I think I said I was quitting. And my coworkers took me out for drinks at the end of it. And it was like all the black people and like the one cool white person. And this black woman who worked in accounting. And she was like, oh, I guess your boyfriend is going to take care of you now. And I was like, huh? What are you what are you talking about? And so she was like, isn't he like a big rapper? And I was like, my boyfriend? I was like, my boyfriend is still an undergrad. Like we go to college together. She was like, I thought you were dating Ice Cube. I had a picture of me and my boyfriend on my desk at work. Someone thought the guy in the picture was Ice Cube. Mind you, he looked nothing like Ice Cube. He had a beard. He had like a full beard like Ice Cube. But like, that's literally where it began and ended. And I graduated from college when I was 20. Ice Cube was somewhere like seven to 10 years older than us. But somebody saw the picture of my then boyfriend and decided like I was dating a rapper and I was quitting because like my rapper boyfriend was going to like pay for me. And I was like, yo, you people are fucking bizarre. Also never told them that it was like a temporary job and I was only working it for the summer. I didn't tell them I was leaving because I was going to grad school at NYU. I realized early on they liked the idea of me being like some weird black girl stereotype. But I say all that to say, these are the architects of Project 2025. I assume because I have a void here that maybe some other people do as well. So we're going to make it easy on you to talk about what this thing is. Um, Technically, it's a 922 page playbook of actions to be taken in the first 180 days of the new administration, assuming that Trump gets elected. In short, it's The Handmaid's Tale Come to Life. I'm reading this on The New Republic. The article starts out on January 20th, 2025, i.e. inauguration. Conservatives plan to resurrect a 150-year-old defunct law to ban abortion across the nation. This is not part of a secret plan. Far from it. It's part of the 180-day playbook produced by Project 2025. It details priorities for an incoming conservative president on day one. These 900 pages lay out a Christian nationalist vision of the United States, one in which married heterosexuality is the only valid form of sexual expression and identity. All pregnancies will be carried to term, even if that requires coercion or death, and transgender and gender nonconforming people do not exist. DemocracyDocket.com describes it as, quote, a terrifying vision of what American life could look like. Among the numerous troubling suggestions laid out in the playbook, they want to purge the federal workforce of tens of thousands of workers 
in favor of hiring ones who will adhere to the conservative principles of Project 2025. Democracy Docket describes the 180-day playbook as, quote, a cult recruiting pamphlet. Although Trump has said he has, quote, and unquote, no idea about Project 2025, it's notable that more than 20 officials whom Trump appointed during his first term helped write this 900 and some odd page document. Project 25 also calls for eliminating what they call, quote, woke propaganda from all laws and federal regulations. Um, We're seeing this happen in Florida and Texas already. Also notable, when they say woke propaganda, they want to ban anything regarding sexual orientation, diversity, equity, and inclusion, i.e. DEI, all those DEI jobs that Black women had that have been hacked over the past year, those, bye-bye. And anything related to gender equality and reproductive rights. Project 2025 also advocates for mass arrests and deportations of undocumented people, ending many worker protections, dropping prosecutions of far-right militias like the Proud Boys, i.e. them people that ran up on the Capitol on January 6th, them and folks like them. And they want to give additional tax cuts to big corporations and the rich. Project 2025 also doesn't believe in climate change. They want to expand oil drilling in the United States, terminate clean energy incentives, and end fossil fuel regulations. Project 2025 calls for the prosecution of district attorneys that Trump doesn't like and a takeover of law enforcement in quote and unquote blue cities and states. He also read something. It wasn't here. They want to take back the territory that has been promised to Native Americans. Despite long existing treaties and laws and all that, they're just like, nah, although we've stolen all your land and committed a genocide on all of your ancestors, we also want the little bit of land that you had left, the stuff we said we'd never take, now we want it. Like, these people are bonkers. And yet, if Trump gets elected, this could be our new reality. I told you I started watching Handmaid's Tale. When I was still living in South Africa, I started watching it and I made it through all five seasons in about two weeks. I told y'all the part at which June and her husband are like, yo, we got to get the fuck out of here. Like things are really getting shitty. They're watching TV, some unnamed all news network. They're horrified as these Gilead supporters do a run on the White House. And that's their sign that like, oh my God, America has really gone to shit. These people are really fucking bonkers and we must get out of here for our own safety. January 6th was when? And we still sitting up in here? I know Handmaid's Tale is very fictional. I mean, was very fictional, but this shit is really about to come to life if Trump gets elected. I don't know what the Democrats are doing. Clearly, people are not enthused about Biden. Like, that just is what it is. And there's nothing you can really do at this point to get people all riled up and excited about voting for Biden the same way we were once excited about voting for Obama. It's just not going to happen. I don't know why they're not pushing that, like, this is the crazy shit that's in Project 2025, and this will be your new reality if you reelect this nutcase and he becomes president again. This shit is crazy. They want an American theocracy, which is against the Constitution, which nobody really seems to care about at this point. Black women are going to do what we always do. We're always going to vote sensibly. We're always going to try to save the republic because that's what we do. When bad things happen to America, we get the brunt of it. But like this, I'm preaching to the choir, but we can't be the only ones out here voting like we got sense. There's a whole chunk of black men, those crazy ass incels with microphones that call themselves podcasters that have no idea about leadership, but want everybody to submit to them just because they were born with a penis. Those people who believe women have no worth in general, but especially not after 35 when they hit some imaginary wall. Those mofos are going to vote for Trump. It's it's scary. I don't say these things to alarm you. I say these things because like Project 2025 is some scary shit. And I have no idea why the Democrats are not blasting it everywhere. Listening to Taraji is the host of the BET Awards. I'm glad BET is involved in voting. I'm glad that they're having conversations about it. But my God, my first look at something as major as this should not be on black entertainment television. I thank them very much for expanding. I thank them very much for trying to make sure people are informed. But at the same time, I'm just like, that's not BG's primary job. Like, what, what are the Democrats doing? I'm some random podcaster that primarily talks about pop culture. I hope that I'm not informing anyone of Project 2025. I hope that you all knew what it was. And I'm the last person to the table because I ain't been in the country. But like, my job is to stay on top of stuff like this. And 
I don't hear about it. So whatever marketing is going on, whatever mentioning is going on, I am a voting person. I realize how hard people worked for my right to vote. I realize how many people died for my right to vote. It's something that I absolutely take seriously. And at the same damn time, I don't understand how the mark is being missed in informing me, people like me, about things like this. That's, that's troubling. All right, that's the episode. We'll be back in a couple weeks. If something completely nuts so bonkers happens, in the first week I'm gone, you're on your own. In the second week, if it's completely nuts so bonkers, then we'll talk about it. I also realized I haven't talked about the latest Because there's yet another lawsuit against Diddy. So now there's three lawsuits in addition, I think, to the other four or five that we haven't discussed. I just don't have the bandwidth to keep discussing the women that this man has allegedly assaulted. I also did read that he's selling one of his homes, something like 70 million. He's trying to liquidate his assets. And I was like, ooh, already? That's not a good sign. But the man should have like mad legal fees if it's like seven people suing him. The attorney's not by the hour. The attorney's on retainer. But that ain't no small retainer for all the shit he got to deal with. He. Could be a she. And then he, like it's singular. No, that's a team of attorneys. He paying out the ass. He cutting a check. All right. I'm about to edit this. And then I didn't have plans to go to the show tonight. But then someone informed me this is the last time Frankie Beverly will be performing, at least at Essence. He is officially retiring and they're doing a tribute for him tonight. Old school essence. Frankie Beverly used to close the show every Sunday night. So they're bringing that back. And everyone used to wear white that night. You know how black people love a good white party. We get it straight from the continent. They love it. You could literally go to Ghana and wear white every day and there would be an event for you. At least in December. All right. Talk soon. You take care of yourself while I'm gone, okay? I'll take care of myself too. Okay, bye. Today's episode is brought to you by Angie. Angie has made it easier than ever to connect with skilled professionals to get all your jobs and projects done well. Let me tell you, there's the version of it where you try to do something at home, and then there's a version of it where you have someone help you, you watch them do it the right way, and you go, thank God I didn't try to do that myself. I have fully done things around the home that I think look good, and then a bang in the night, and I wake up to a shelf collapsing, a painting falling off the wall. Like it, I've I've seen it all go south. I own a home, and I can tell you... I know how much work it can take, whether it's everyday maintenance and repairs or making dream projects a reality. It can be hard just to know where to start. But now all you need to do is Angie that and find a skilled local pro who will deliver the quality and expertise you need. Whatever your home project, big or small, indoor or outdoor, you can Angie that and connect with skilled professionals to get the project done well. Right now, one of my wish lists is I want a bike for my condo in Milwaukee and I would love to rig it up on a pulley in the ceiling because I have one of those like lofted ceilings, but I'm so scared to try that on my own. Angie has 20 years of home experience and they've combined it with new tools to simplify the whole process. Bring them your project online or with the Angie app. Answer a few questions and Angie can handle the rest from start to finish or help you compare quotes from multiple pros and connect instantly, which means you can take care of any home project in just a few taps. Because when it comes to getting the most out of your home, you can do this when you Angie that. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. Hi, I'm Angie Hicks, co-founder of Angie. And one thing I've learned is that you buy a house, but you make it a home. Because with every fix, update, and renovation, it becomes a little more your own. So you need all your jobs done well. For nearly 30 years, Angie has helped millions of homeowners hire skilled pros for the projects that matter. From plumbing to electrical, roof repair to deck upgrades. So leave it to the pros who will get your jobs done well. Hire high quality certified pros at Angie.com. You can host the best backyard barbecue. When you find a professional on Angie to make your backyard the best around. Connect with skilled professionals to get all your home projects done well. Inside to outside. Repairs to renovations. Get started on the Angie app or visit Angie.com today. You can do this when you Angie that.